Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today I'm going to show you how to uh, use coordinate geometry to, uh, to look at a quadrilateral and determine exactly what kind of quadrilateral it is. Um, and all the work you have to show and how you explain your work and everything. So here we go. To start, I'm going to go ahead and plot the points. Um, so I see A is at negative 4, 1, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. B is at negative 2, 4. So that's up here. C is at 4, 0 over here. And D is at 2, negative 3, which is down here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and draw my quadrilateral just so I get a nice picture of it. Now I'm looking at this and I'm saying it looks like a rectangle. So if that is your argument, you are in bad shape because it looks like a rectangle is not good enough. You have to be able to prove exactly what shape it is. So the way we do that is, um, whoops, <laughs> is well, uh, sorry for that little interruption, just got a text. Here we go. Um, so we have to find the slopes of each of the sides because that's gonna tell us a lot. And we're also gonna need to find the lengths of the sides. So let's start with the slope of segment AB. So slope formula is the difference between the two y values over the difference between the x's. So 4 minus 1 for the y's, negative 2 minus negative 4, which is negative 2 plus 4 for the x's. So that's 3 over 2. So that's the slope of AB. Now I'm going to do BC. So B and C, really being careful to make sure I pick the right points. So my y's are are zero, or four and zero, so I'm gonna do zero minus four on the top. My x's are negative two and four, so that's four minus negative two. So four minus negative two, which becomes four plus two. So that's negative four over positive six, which reduces to negative two thirds. Okay, there's CD, let's do CD. So C, D, the x value, the y values, sorry, are negative 3 and 0. So negative 3 minus 0 on the top. The x's are 4 and 2, so that's 2 minus 4. So that's negative 3 over negative 2. Negative divided by a negative is positive, so that becomes positive 3 over 2. And already I noticed something. I noticed that this one and this one, A, B, and C, D, are parallel. So that is parallel to that. Um, so that's going to that's gonna already tell, give us some important information, but let's keep going. Let's find the fourth side. The slope of the fourth side is AD. So my y values are 1 and negative 3. So negative 3 minus 1 on the top. My x values are negative 4 and 2. So that's 2 minus negative 4, which is 2 plus 4. So that becomes negative 4 over 6, which reduces to negative 2 thirds. And I see that these two also have the same slope, B, C, and A, D. So that means those are also parallel. So I have both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So this is at least a parallelogram. But now I need to determine if it's a special parallelogram. Well, let's start with possibility of it being a rectangle. Well, if it's a rectangle, it has right angles. So how do I know if it has right angles? I know it has right angles if consecutive sides are perpendicular or adjacent sides are perpendicular. So for example, AB and BC. If those are perpendicular, then that's a right angle. And how do I know from the slopes if, if they're perpendicular? If their slopes are opposite reciprocals. So I'm looking at these two slopes. Are the fractions flipped over? 3 over 2, 2 over 3, yes. And are they opposite signs? 1 positive, 1 negative? Yes. So those are, in fact, perpendicular, so that's a right angle. And I notice that that's true for all of these. So B, C, and C, D, same thing, opposite reciprocals. So those two sides are perpendicular. Uh, C, D, and A, D, and A, D, same thing. And A, B, and A, D. So now I know that this thing is a rectangle, but it could also be a rhombus. It could be a square. Now I know what you're thinking. You can look at that and see that it's not a square. That's pretty obvious from this particular one. Um, but it's pretty obvious is not a valid mathematical argument. 
and you may get problems where it's hard to tell by looking. So you do have to show your work. This is the way you mathematically, when it says prove it, this is how you're going to prove it. So all I really have to do here is prove that any two of these sides are not the same. So I'm going to pick two sides next to each other, so AB and BC, and I'm going to calculate the lengths. So AB, I'm going to calculate the length of AB by using the distance formula, the distance between A and B. And the distance formula is the square root of the difference between the x's squared, so the x's for AB, negative 4 and negative 2, so that's negative 2 minus negative 4, which is plus 4. And then the difference between the y's squared, so again I'm looking at the y's, are 1 and 4, so that's 4 minus 1 squared. Sorry, my writing is a little sloppy there. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify that as much as I can. This is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. And so I have the square root of 13. So AB, the length of AB is rad 13. So now let me find the square root, or sorry, the length of one of those adjacent sides. I'll use base BC. I could have used AD also, it doesn't really matter. So BC, same thing, difference between the x's squared. Look at my x's, 4 and 0. So that's 0 minus 4, and that's squared. Difference between the y's. Whoops, see the mistake I just made? See why you have to be so super careful? I just made a boo-boo. I did the y's, so I'm going to now do the x's, because since it's one plus the other, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you can see how easy it is to make a mistake. Even a super pro like me who's been doing this for years sometimes will mix things up. So got to be super careful. Okay, so uh, the x's are negative 2 and 4, so I'm going to do 4 minus negative 2, which is 4 plus 2. And now I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So that's over here. That's negative 4 squared, which is 16. And over here, that's 4 plus 2 is 6. And 6 squared is 36. And if you had done it correctly in the right order, it would have just been 36 plus 16. It would have ended up with the same answer. And that's the square root of 52. And normally, we, I ask you to simplify that radical. It can be simplified. But all we're really interested in here is proving that they're not equal. And I think it's pretty safe to say that the square root of 13 and the square root of 15, 52 are not equal. So I know this is not a rhombus, and I could even write that, not a rhombus. Sides are not congruent. Right? You could write that out a little bit more articulately, but that's really enough. Not a rhombus because the sides are not congruent. So I have determined that the most specific name for this shape is a rectangle. Okay? So the point of all this is not that you look at that shape and say, hey, I think that's a rectangle, but that you prove it mathematically. And that's what we did here by calculating all those slopes and calculating distances. And that is the level of work you have to do here. Okay, one more thing. It said find the point where the diagonals intersect. Uh, well, one of the things we know about all parallelograms, which a rectangle is a special parallelogram, is that the diagonals bisect each other. The diagonals split each other in half. So if I look at the diagonals of those two shapes, they split each other in half. What that means is this and this are equal, this and this are equal. So when it asks me to find the point where they intersect, which is going to be right here, that's just going to be the midpoint, the midpoint of either diagonal, right? Because it's actually the midpoint of both. So I'm going to pick one of them. I'll pick AC, and I'm going to find the midpoint using, using the midpoint formula. Sorry, that was a call from my mom. I'll call her back. Um, and the midpoint formula is the average of the x's. So for AC, that's negative 4 plus 4 divided by 2. And for the y's, that's 1 plus 0. I'm sorry, this is getting a little messy, but hopefully you can follow this all. 1 plus 0 over 2. 
And if I simplify that, I get negative 4 plus 4, which is 0, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1, divided by 2 is a half. And so this is the location of the midpoint of AC. And as you can see, that looks like about where it was on my graph. And so that is where the diagonals intersect. That's all for now. Hope this helped. Good luck.